testing, testing, testing. Talk on your end for a second. Yo, what's up, my players? Yeah, I'm keeping this in there. Dr. Jeremy <laughs> Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, I'm especially excited to have John McIntyre, who we met at Titans live and in person, who's one of the top email marketers. He's known as the autoresponder guy, and he helps entrepreneurs increase their email profits by 25 to 100% in 90 days with no advertising. Who doesn't want that, John? Less than three years ago, <laughs> he was a lone tiger out in the Philippines, and since then, he's built a successful marketing agency and coaching business. He has also interviewed some of the world's top marketers and copywriters, including Perry Marshall, John Carlton, Bon Halbert, and many others. I've listened to several of them. They're fantastic. These days, he runs his business online. He lives in Thailand, races motorcycles through the mountains, and pretty much does whatever he wants because he has no wife and kids yet. But John, thank you for <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining me. Man, it's great to be here. I'm I'm so, I'm so glad to come on here. I mean, we met at Titans a month ago. And we had a, a couple great conversations. So yeah, it's good to reconnect, man. And and I think you're right about that wife and kids connect. So <laughs> you, <know>, John, <laughs> I like that one. Since since this is inspired insider, I have to ask you this question and. Tell me about your lowest moment and then how you push forward through it. Um, I think there's been a few low moments, but I, I think one of the lowest moments was getting to the Philippines. And having that sight, like oh, I was, always, I was so excited to be in the Philippines. I just arrived. We just spent a week partying because we we had sort of a meetup, a bit of a mastermind. The week I, the weekend I arrived in the Philippines, and I'm all excited. It's my first time in Asia. You know, I'm I'm thinking I'm going to be the next Tim Ferriss. Like I'm just pumped up on that dream. 22 years old at the time, and uh, you know, a week after I get there, the sight that I was, you know, it was still small, admittedly, but for me at the time, it, it was a big deal, and it gets wiped out. And I remember thinking, like, what did I even come out here for? Like, what's this is such like a what am what am I doing? And I remember getting on the phone with Dan Andrews, the uh, the guy who set up the internship in the first place. And I was trying to talk to him, and I could hear that he he sounded a little bit frustrated with me because I think I, I maybe he wasn't. I I could be wrong. I felt like I was taking up his time or something like that. And uh, you know, I felt I didn't really know what to do. And uh, I mean, it was challenging. I mean, there are those times when it's kind of like you 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 wrestle with the self-doubt of thinking that, that uh, you know, I don't know if I can do this or, or really thinking that I'm, I want to figure it out, but this just isn't working. I'm just getting pissed off with life, pissed off with, you know, yourself, myself at the time. I remember I went and, I went and um, <clears throat> what did I do? I didn't want to work, so I probably smoked a few cigarettes because I, I smoked a lot back then and uh, I was smoking and, and probably, I think I jumped in a taxi, jumped in a tricycle is what they had in the Philippines and went, went down to a beach and bought myself an acoustic guitar for probably $40 or something like that, just a cheap Filipino thing, and sat on the beach and played, so, you know, I can play guitar, I played guitar for a long time, so I just sat there and played guitar and thought, I think, you know, just sort of processed a bit of stuff, and it didn't, I didn't go back that evening thinking, wow, man, life is amazing again, but, but I processed a bit and sort of got back to the, you know, the hotel and then got back on my feet and then just kicked on. And so I think that, I mean, there's been other low moments like that through the last few years and I, I through life in general, and for me, I don't think I've ever seriously considered the option of going home. It was always a case of, look, I'm going to make this work. Like, I, like absolute worst case scenario, I'll, I'll borrow money to get home or something. But, but short of that happening, short of me like going bankrupt or, or you know something like that, I'm going to make this work. And uh, so, like, no matter how bad it got at that time or any of the other times, you know, when I had 200 bucks in my bank account, you know, left, it, uh, it was always. It didn't always feel good. I mean, there's an element of like, yeah, yeah, I, I was trying to, you know, I was pumping myself up. I was trying to manage my emotional state. I, you know, I'm meditating, doing everything I could to kind of keep myself up. But still, it didn't feel good at the time. And, I, I, you know, it does feel a lot better to have money. But, uh, yeah. yeah. So, does that was what happened. Yeah. So, going from that, what's been the proudest moment? Hmm. You ask really good questions, man. Thank you. Um, I 
there's been a lot of moments, man. I mean, I, I, I don't tend like personally. I don't tend to. I don't tend to single out moments. But like that was that was the best moment of my life. And to me, I feel like every year is just getting better. But if I had to pick something in the last few years, I'd probably say Bangkok. Probably no. Actually, I was probably uh, I got to the I got to Thailand. Sorry, two years ago I'd, I'd been in Thailand, a couple months. It was in December or something like that. I made about six grand with copywriting stuff. And at the end of that month, I was so happy because I'd finally cracked it. You know, I'd, I'd gotten to the to Thailand after the Philippines and was sort of a bit nervous, wondering if I'd be able to make it work. And boom, I got there and I made six grand and I couldn't believe it because that was more than I'd ever made. I, I mean, that was that was on par, if not more than I'd ever made in a job back home. So that was me thinking, whoa, I'd like, that was that I've made it moment. That like, mm -hmm. I know that I'm not going to have to, you know, I, you know, if I gave up and went home, I could do that. But, but unless I stop working, I'm not going to fail anymore. Mm -hmm. And it was that newfound confidence, like, this is me. I made this happen. So. Yeah. Realizing now you're the rainmaker. Yeah. And realizing that even if I wasn't as successful as I wanted to be at that stage, that the, the real pride or the real thrill was knowing that it was me making it happen. I, I, I mean, I think that's the thrill of being in business and being an entrepreneur. It's not so much like making a billion dollars if that's what you want to do, but, but it's, it's, the, it's being your own man or woman. The being in, it's not even just being in control. It's, it's being that, that you're, you're actively engaging with life. You're not waiting for it to happen. You're, mm -hmm. you're getting out there and you're doing stuff. And even if you're failing, even if you're messing up and even if it's not going right, you're, at least you're in the ring. Yeah. So. How do you celebrate? My cousin came to, my cousin Jack, he came to visit me in Thailand and I mean, he was just there to visit. We just partied for about 10 days straight. Went to the full moon party down in Koh Phangan. So it's quite an infamous party. And yeah. Yeah. Job, thanks for sharing that. This has been really valuable. I appreciate your time. I have one last question, John, before I ask it. Just tell people where they can find you, what they should check out online. Uh, the best place to go and learn more about me is at themcmethod.com. So that's where that's the so t h e mcmethod.com, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where yeah, I mean that's where you can learn all about me. I got the podcast there with yeah. you know Perry Marshall, John Carlton, all those kind of guys, and uh, I mean you can sign up to the email list. You can see the emails that I send out. You can why would someone before. not if you're smart and this someone's their autoresponder guy? You better sign up for his list. I mean, just. It doesn't matter if you like it or if it's in your – you just need to see what someone else is doing. And besides that, yep. John is a beautiful site. I mean I actually learned a lot just from looking at your site, the way you – I mean the, the design of it, the look of it, the font of it. I mean it's, it's really well done. Thanks, man. Thanks, yeah. man. And two, if, if I mean, if you go to the site and sign up and add yourself to the email list, I'll reply to your email. Yeah. So, uh, not always every day, every you know the same day, but but I will get back to you in the email. And the first email that you get from me will ask you to send me an email. So yeah, learn from the autoresponder master. My so Nick Method. Anywhere else that they should check out? TheMcMethod.com. No. I'll link it's that all up. Yeah, the McMethod.com. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting on the domain actually. We've got a back order on McMethod.com. I'm trying to pick that up as well. So. so, my last question, John, and I have so many other questions, which I'm, I've already taken more of your time. Um, I wanted to talk about, this is not what I'm asking. I was going to ask about, it's so interesting that your dad was a pastor. That I wanted to bring that up. I didn't bring that up at some point, but we'll save it. You'll have to put it in your auto sequence so they have to sign up for that. <laughs> um, just. The hardest part about running your company, some of your best advice, um, but the question I want to ask is some of your influential mentors and or books that you suggest that people uh, check out. Because I know you are a student of the game, as you even if you're you know reaching higher levels. Mm. I would check out one of the first books I think you should check out is 80-20 Sales and Marketing by Perry Marshall. That was one of the best books I read this year. I would uh, check out Atlas Shrugged. It was it was an amazing book that set off a whole bunch of sort of internal shifts <clears throat> sometime last year when I read it. 
that's not really marketing focus, just general. I'd say business and mindset. And uh, as for mentors, I mean, for me, I, I've just often, you know what I love about Americans actually? Because I'm from Australia, Sydney, Australia, so I've spent time with, you know, I live in Thailand, so I've spent time with all kinds of people. And it's interesting seeing, you know, what different cultures are like. And one thing I I love about Americans because we're, we're not all like this in Australia. In Australia, if, if you become successful or if you get too good at something, you know, there's something we call tall poppy syndrome. You know, you don't want to get too good, too successful because people start to think that you, you know, you think you're the shit basically. They think you, you know, you think you're so cool, but you're really not. You're all snobby, whatever. Whereas in America, what I love about Americans is Americans have this mindset where it's like, well, if he can do it, I can do it. But, you know, if that, if that other guy is make, out there making a billion dollars, well, I can make a billion dollars. Like that's the attitude. And if I say, if I tell an American that. I want to do X, Y, Z. He's like, man, go for it. You can do X, Y, Z. Or at least the Americans I've met. So there's probably a bit of a self-selection bias going on because I meet people out here in Thailand. But, but my experience with Americans is they've been very much, it's that, that's part of the culture, that land of the free, home of the brave. Mm -hmm. Let's go out. Like, you can do it. I can do it. We all can do it. So to bring that back, what was the question here? I this was leading to something. I, I actually <laughs> like your answer. It doesn't matter what the question is at this point. What was the, <laughs> there was a point to that. It was a mentor mentors you were talking that's talk it about that's mentors. it okay so so what i do is in this way so that's where the american thing comes in is 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 i try and look at i try and have this attitude that that i can do anything anyone else can do which is where that, that i think that's why i get on with americans because i i really approve yeah like right now i'm reading a book about billionaires it's about you know it's called uh, all the money in the world it's about the forbes 400 so 400 richest people in the world and it's fascinating because it's making me think back to it's it's making me look at sort of my beliefs around money and wealth and yeah. business, and I'm reading these stories about these billionaires thinking, man, they don't really sound that unique. I mean, why can't I just do what they do? If mm. I just did what they did, well, I get the same results. Yeah, it's not obviously not that simple. Yeah, but it's interesting how it, that mindset yeah. shifts. So when it comes to mentors, I think it's just get out there and find people who are doing stuff way, way, way bigger than you are, yeah. and put yourself in their shoes and think, man, I could do the exact same thing. Yeah. John, you're fantastic. Always love chatting with you. I can go on and on, but it's uh, evening there, and you're going to need to get to bed soon. So um, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Jeremy. I've had an absolute blast, man.